do 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 <laughs> it's uh, good to be back in the office. It's good today. to be back in the office. We've been out in the field the last <laughs> 19 weeks. Uh, Just been recording in tents. <laughs> back in the office. Finally, finally got some coffee with me. Finally, um. <laughs> good to be back. Do you mind? So, yeah, um. Let's address the dragon. In the Let's room. address the dragon in the room, which is ah, the dragon in this room. Well, the first thing, week twenty, we did it. Week twenty, that's big. We're no longer a teenager. Yeah, we're out of the teens. We're into week twenty, even though it's episode we're, nineteen. You know, we're technically still teenagers. Episode nineteen. Yeah. Gosh, high school really is hell. <laughs> 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 would uh would Doolittle be better if it was set in high school? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I you know if this was a Disney movie, there'd be a direct to DVD uh like a Disney movie in like 2000. There'd be a direct to DVD prequel sequel prequel of them in high school of him and Doolittle Moodfly and Moodfly and Lily in high school. Yeah. Doolittle and Moodfly are both chasing after Lily, but she just goes off on adventures. Yeah. She blows off school all the time, going off on crazy adventures. And she drags these two guys along with her. And you have the headmaster, Lord Badgley. <laughs> 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 uh, there's there's the, the fourth wheel character, which is the queen, Queen Victoria. Oh, I was going to say. Also a, in high school. It's an animal. It's <laughs> Oh, no. It's Polly. Polly is the, um, the teacher's pet, literally. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's good dude do little academy would would rock you're about to say slay <laughs> do little academy would slay i was about to say slay. <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm like i feel like i'll be made fun <laughs> so slay. and then i was so that's good oh uh, yes yeah got it <laughs> got it but no um the Queen, Doolittle, Lily, and Moodfly are all high school students. Uh, how does him talking to animals come up in this? Um, the cafeteria rats. <laughs> Just the cafeteria rats. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a pet. The, the the reptiles. The reptile room. The reptile room. Polly's the teacher's pet, so he can talk to her. The reptile room is like all the musicians. It's not even the. They're not even reptiles. It's just <laughs> it's, it's just the music room. The music room. Honestly, I think it could work. High school is hell, but when you can talk to animals. <laughs> oh wow, that's good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. The whole world is your oyster, and the oyster talks back. <laughs> oh wow! Oh yeah! <laughs> yes. Introducing Doodle Academy. <laughs> Doodle Academy. If you were if you were to like give this movie a trailer like like in that style, you know, like the early 2000s mm -hmm. late 90s style of like yeah, kids movie, like teenage movie, how would you do it? What's give me your best. Oh. This is going to come out rough. <laughs> okay. Speaking of um, <laughs> so you just changed. The I was going to change the subject. I was going to dodge. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was trying to think, oh, and yeah. then I could hear my neighbor weed whacking in the background. Well, we're in the office, so I don't know why. <laughs> right, we're back in the office. Back in, uh, so back in the principal's office. We'll come back to it. I'm, I'm just. I'm, we'll put it on hold while you have some time to gestate that juices. No, I think we need to approach it right away because okay. it's not going to get better. <laughs> it's not so going longer, to get better. If you wait longer, it'll just become worse and worse. I mean, with the magic of editing, it can really happen at any time. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Wing. 
Yeah, that's me. <laughs> freeze frame. Record scratch. Record scratch, freeze frame. Yep, that's me. Uh, I bet you're wondering how I can talk to animals. Well, you see, it all started. <laughs> Except we, that's not what the movie's about. Yeah, you're right. But so that wouldn't be. I mean, a trailer doesn't really have to tell you what the movie is about. It just has to show you the whole movie now. Have you ever gone on an adventure? You know what? Robert Downey Jr. literally does this in that one talking to animals. He's like, you ever wonder what it's like to talk to animals? Well, I can't. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the talking to animals segment on the Blu-ray special features is what we're trying to do right now. Yeah. They have a lot of things to say. Sometimes dragons are constipated. <laughs> oh, this is going to be the blowout of the year. Anyway, uh, what's on the agenda for today? You got anything? Or? Uh, let me check here. Oh, no. It's empty. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, doing some palm reading there. Yeah. I don't have anything on the agenda. I thought the high school riff was really good. Yeah. <laughs> we started off so that's, strong and now it's really powerful. Just go, um, I don't have any notes. No. I didn't have anything to talk about. The only thing that I sort of have to talk about is... um. The movie is set up in such a way with all of the Lily segments that Lily could be alive. If this movie was an actual adventure movie from like the early 2000s <laughs> or late 90s, Lily would be alive. Yeah, she would I, return you heroically. Ever, She's you the ever, greatest adventure ever. And the only thing they could find of hers in the wreckage was her journal. That's a red flag. You ever see that uh, movie, uh, Double Jeopardy, starring Ashley Judd? No. Do you know the plot of it? I do not. Uh, basically, someone like this woman's framed for the murder of uh, of like someone, and then uh, later out, it turns out they're alive, so she murders him. That's like the plot, right? Okay, that's fun. Right. So, <laughs> do it a little <laughs> later. Murders Lily when finds out she's alive. Yeah, no, that's because yeah, everyone I mean, thinks he would he probably he would probably feel betrayed. Yeah. if he did find out she was alive, so he, so he has be, to murder. Him. He probably would be angry about that. I would be angry, but you're right. Like she could easily be alive, shipwrecked somewhere. For what? example, on a mysterious island. On a mysterious island that no one has plotted a course to, and there could be like little clues to it, like. It's weird that they arrived to the island and they never parked their boat or whatever you would call that. Disembark. Disembark. Anchor. Uh, they never like w approach the island in any sense. They're just suddenly on it. Well, it shows them sort of pulling into the cove and then it teleports to the other side of the island. Yeah. And it shows Moodfly and his English soldiers in little boats going to the shore. And then, and then they're already unpacked disembarked yeah. and and like it would have been neat like there could have been like some hints that there's wreckage of like her old boat or something yeah that could have been fun and look doolittle has to deal with some of this suddenly and it's actually a character building moment and it sets it up so like that you expect lily to be there whenever um the dragon like Shows him the pat the cave, but he ends up pulling her bones out of the dragon. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that too. Yeah, the dragon ate her for sure. <laughs> when he when he unblocks this constipated dragon, he finds Lily's ring in the wreckage. You know, maybe that was originally what he pulled out. <laughs> it was Lily and... <sighs> Alive. I, I know this. Oh, she's alive. <laughs> she's alive. She the one final push, madam, if you please. Ah, it's this birth the rebirth moment. Yeah. There is sort of an interesting um <laughs> see, I haven't given this any thought at all. So I think this might be something we double back on later. Oh yeah. The theology to this movie. Theology, right? yeah. Because you've got the Eden Tree Island, right? So this idea of Eden, right? That right. the the start of all biblical right what you say yeah biblical you also have you know the rose symbology lady rose mm -hmm. and lily the the water lily boat and lily herself and death death and the queen is no more but oh wait she's resurrected <laughs> the queen victoria christ-like figure perhaps yes. on the 17th day she rose right, she again, rose again. <laughs> 
there's something there yeah miracles take a lot longer in the 1800s right right well the earth is actually spinning slower it's slowed down i was gonna say faster no it's spinning slower so the days are longer longer makes sense i meant faster Uh, yeah (laughs) reverse that okay the earth is so the reverse polarity of the (laughs) right it's the reverse polarity that's uh made it take longer gosh Every time we watch this movie, like every once in a while, we notice something that is like non consequential in the background that you just have never seen before. And today, there's a very funny scene where Stubbins does his first animal impersonation and he goes, Roar! Mm hmm. And he continues the roar multiple times while, like, the characters move. And he's in the background. Well, he's in a certain stance, and it's so funny. It's he's like got a he's, bear stance. Yeah, he's, like, pretending to be a bear, and it's so ridiculous. Uh, Stubbins, whenever we intercut this from the shot from up here, it actually, you might, we're not sure how the audio is going to be. You might be roaring. So we're going to need you to keep the roaring pose that you had whenever you were roaring. Yeah, just, so look like a bear. Just make sure you're just a little bit hunched over and you're really throwing out those arms. <laughs> and imagine, make sure to flex those shoulders too. Imagine someone doing a parody of a WWE pose. It really is. That's what it's like. It literally, it looks like a little boy. It looks like this is what the person you imagine whenever we do our stubbins carrying bags impression. That is exactly what he looks like. It looks like a little boy doing like a Hulk Hogan impersonation or something. Yes, it absolutely does. That's so funny. Yeah. It was, I've never seen that before. I I, I love it when the writers add in new scenes into the movies. Yeah, it's really good. So stubbins weird stance moments. He has... Just after he roars, when he's in the background. When he carries the bags. When he's standing still, when Yoshi jumps into the water to harness the whale. Yeah. And when he turns the dragon onto her side. The whole dragon scene, really he has strange a weird, weird stance. I also don't know if we've mentioned, whenever he is jumping on the bridge, from the bridge, off the bridge, into the elevator, yeah. and then from the elevator into the boat, it's a combination of live action and animated, and yeah. it looks like Polar Express. I, I've never put that together. In fact, I don't remember watching that part today. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looks like he looks like a character ripped straight out of the Polar Express, and I because know. it's like really strange animation, and it's definitely not a real person. But is it a real person? It's like really bizarre movements. And then the train conductor is there operating the elevator lift. <laughs> it's really. It's like whoa! This is the Polar Express. Tom Hanks is there. Yeah. I wonder if they got Tom Hanks to do the Stubbins motion capture. <laughs> Who would you put in this movie? You need you need another big name actor for there aren't enough. Reason. There aren't enough. There aren't enough. Universal looks at this movie and they go, Hey, we see all these big names. We see these list of Oscar nominations that you've got attached to this. But we're nervous about is this gonna draw people to the theaters? We need one more. I mean, let's like just examine the people who who is actually like a acting draw at the moment. Robert Downey Jr. Okay. John Cena. Mm, John Cena. I think he has a fan base. But that was even, he sort of hit his stride after 2020. I don't know. People were super into John Cena. They, they they were, but now he's like he's he's elevated above his meme status. Yeah, I think it's fair to say. Where then closer he, to like The Rock. Yeah. Right? Now, now I think he's a he's pretty well liked and like like people are excited to see movies with him in it now. Where I think he was still in his early Rock I years. I don't know. I think that people little. were still like, oh yeah, John Cena. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. But he's more of a meme. I guess that's true. Kumail Nanjiani. That means it's going to be funny. But who, who um, else? Emma Thompson? Nah. I Jim don't. Broadbent? The Jim those Broadbent. Are, see, those are names that are like esteemed. So it'd be like, oh, okay. They're they're esteemed, but I don't think they're like... They're not draws on their own. They're not draws on their own. Yeah. They, they add a class to it, but right. I, I don't think a lot of people know I think that what they're they trying are. to do with them, though, is add class. Yeah, because so. this movie was probably originally an Oscar. Oscar bait. Oscar right. bait. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Especially with the director. Um, so who are we adding? Tom Holland is a draw. Tom Holland is a draw. And so is Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez is a draw. But so I you're looking for like a youthful, I'm looking for famous a, person. Or or just someone who you're like, oh, I hear they're in it. 
Like, okay. Like if Tom Cruise was in the movie, right? Like that, that you'd be like, oh, Whoa, like Tom Cruise. Like they're reunited from their last time they were in a movie together, Tropic Thunder. Well, yeah, it would be like he does. He has his own stunt in this movie because he motion caps Stubbins when he jumps off the the bridge. <laughs> I think Bill Murray is a good ad. Bill Murray. For like this, a movie like this. Because he, he could voice an animal. Too. Yeah, because it also has to be a voice actor, which is part of the reason why a lot of these don't work out. Bill Murray is a good shout. That would probably be like, people would be like, oh yeah, he's funny. This is going to be yeah, a funny it, movie. Yeah. And enough people know him in, of all age groups. Yeah. And who's like someone youthful we can... Oh, Pete Davidson would be Pete a good Davidson. guy. Pete Davidson. Let's see if people hate him though. Yeah, that's fair. He's a div- divisive. Is he though? I thought everyone liked him. I think some people hate his face. What What are your thoughts on Pete Davidson? I do not care about him. He's an SNL dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. I don't think SNL will always be what it is. I don't really nothing think. beyond it. I don't really care about stand up too much. Oh, John Mulvaney would be a good get. Um, Isn't he, isn't he canceled? I don't know if he still is. Okay. He just did a new special. He became uncancelled. Yeah, yeah, I think he and he was also in Puss in Boots. He's uh the the oh, bad he's the guy. bad guy, but he's the bad guy in that. Yeah. So you, it's okay when you have cancelled people be bad guys because you <laughs> that can, would be so funny. You can dislike could them. You, could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> bad guys are always played by cancelled people. <laughs> like what's the worst person you can get to play a bad guy? <laughs> We need someone villainous. There's probably some truth to that. Oh, I, I think there is. Like, because people love a heel. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else that stood out to you today? Um. Okay, and I'm gonna be honest with the folks at home. I did take a little bit of a nap. Yeah, took a little snooze. You uh, you went out right when we you usually went go out. We went <laughs> <laughs> right when uh, we get to the island. Hey, Monte that's where Verde. you went out. That's too. where I've been out. Yeah. Monte Verde the is place. the sleepy time. It's uh, the place you want to get off of. I remember going right out after he talks to Rizzoli, and then I was out. I know, because I was asking you questions about, wouldn't this be a great spot for Lily to come back to life? <laughs> appear to say Doolittle? And you were just <laughs> silent. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't a good time. Right when he, right when Chi Chi kicks the tiger in the balls, do, do, or Lily shows up. She John? Opens, she opens the cage for him. John, I never thought I'd see you here again. If my dad finds out you're here, he'll kill you. Oh, gee, I wish you would have told me that sooner. No, so here's my scene. Yeah. So Chi Chi kicks the tiger in the balls. Right. And then she opens the door and appears. And Chi Chi recognizes her and says, Lily? And then the tiger kills Chi Chi. <laughs> just rips him <laughs> apart. She distracts the yeah. she ape just long enough. Doolittle manages to scramble away, but it's clear that Lily wants to kill him now. Oh, no. And that's the sequel. Oh, so you're breaking up this movie into two movies. <laughs> no, it's you're a sequel. A split, right? That's sequel bait in the future. Oh, sequel bait for the future. How could you betray us like that? She's been alive this whole time. Working for the queen. <laughs> um, Actually, here's Bachelor something. Or whatever. I think that the queen and the royal agents... The English. Yeah. They probably knew that Lily was the daughter of a pirate king. Oh, we thought, yeah, we did discuss so that at length. Would they allow Doolittle and Lily to own this substantial plot of royal mm. land, knowing that she is a daughter of a pirate? Is this political maneuvering? Are they trying to get close to the pirates or use her against the pirate king or. You know, what's going on here? Do you want to hear my theory? Yeah, I do. Okay, here's my conspiracy theory. Uh, the English killed Lily. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're the ones possible. responsible. Either they have a storm machine or they... There wasn't a there storm. There wasn't a storm. Yeah. And Polly could be an agent of the queen. She is eager to help the queen. At, at That's a good point. They want to get the journal because, like uh, Rizzoli said, it was the only thing his men found in the wreckage because everything else was picked clean. Sc- scooped up by the English. Yeah. They got, they got hold of everything, but they couldn't find the journal. They couldn't find the journal. Rizzoli gets the journal, but they don't have a reason to attack him. 
Right. They need an excuse to invade. Inva and then uh, Duel does the work, gets the journal, delivers it to English. The queen's not really sick. She's feigning illness so that she can use Doolittle to uh, infiltrate the pirate kingdom. Right. Because she wants control of the seas. And the only people in on this are uh, the queen and Blaine. <laughs> I'm right. sorry. Blair. Uh, poop fling. Moodfly. Oh, yes, with the new <laughs> Right. From the Germans. <laughs> From the Germans. Uh, but he dies in the dragon pit or whatever. He falls into the hole. And that's just an accident. But the idea is that Badgley th really thinks the queen is poisoned, so he's trying to orchestrate this, whereas Blair just wants to get to the Eden fruit for the English. So the queen will live forever if she has an infinite supply of Eden right. fruit. The queen uses Lily's death to get Doolittle to... No, so the the queen... The queen uh, was trying to, to use Lily, Lily to get the Eden fruit. Yeah. Lily died. Hid at, the journal before she died, right. which prevented the queen from getting it because Lily threw it overboard. Yes, and the only way she could realistically get the fruit is if Doolittle went on, like, found it. Right. So she has to get Doolittle out of his funk. Yeah. So that he will go on this adventure and for then, her. And then, like, we know for a fact that the English, like, they... If you're on a boat at that time, you try chart all your like like that's what you do as a pilot is you chart your voyage right, right so right, you right. can realistically find it again now they know exactly where the island is right so they can go back there so now they've got infinite eden fruit supply yes and i'm pretty sure in the original uh ending do it a little set into the future and the queen is still the tyrant uh, of the world now she is now the ruler of queen Earth. victoria yes right because in this movie there is no prince albert right because it's 1854 is that right <laughs> i don't know how that's relevant it's 1854 and prince albert is not there yeah in this movie which means that there is no prince albert anyway so in the sequel doodle has to get back to the past mm -hmm. uh and the queen's trying to thwart him at every step Right. He needs to get back to the past and kill her <laughs> to, to stop her tyranny. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's a logical endpoint of the series. And he's a samurai at this point. Oh, okay. You would say he's the last <laughs> samurai? No. It's more of like a jack of all trades. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> samurai jack. Yeah, this is right. a samurai jack. I was just yeah. explaining samurai right. jack to you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I've been watching samurai jack recently nice <laughs> thank you um god i hate this movie <laughs> <laughs> what's it to talk about today? Uh, after 20 watches how do you feel besides hating it you know it's so bizarre how like the ups and downs of this mm -hmm. like last week i felt pretty good <laughs> today mm -hmm. i'm not having it but, like, after we recorded last week and talked about lawnmowers for 15 minutes, uh -huh. like, I was like, yeah, that's a, yeah, this is it. Like, we got this. This is easy. And today is just a struggle. Speaking of lawnmowers, <laughs> I, have some, I have some things I want to talk about. Okay. First of all, I think that we need to address that we received an email with some information. The subject line, lawnmower maintenance text, it's critical, all capitals. You sharpen your mower blades once a year. So this is good information to have. Um, so sharpen. How? I haven't done that yet. I'm going to have to look into that. Listener, how how would you go about sharpening them? You know, you use a sharpener. Right. But continuing on this, this mower talk here, I okay. have something that I need to bring up. This comes from the Princeton Students Climate Initiative. Okay. Oh, gosh. Lawn maintenance and climate change. Okay. Okay. I'm going to read this quick statement here. Okay. Most lawn equipment is gasoline powered, typically being one of two types, two stroke or four stroke engines. <laughs> to fuel this equipment, it takes about 800 million gallons of gasoline annually. 800 million gallons of gasoline annually with 17 million additional gallons spilled in the process those numbers come from epa the epa mm, two stroke estimation <laughs> engines yeah yeah 
<laughs> Sorry, continue. Seven, so, so 17 million gallons spilled annually of gasoline. Spilled? Spilled. 800 million gallons of gasoline consumed by these machines. Oh, yeah. So we're talking about a lot of uh, climate pollution from these. That's, you know, gas-powered leaf blowers, lawnmowers. Okay, so I have a counterpoint to this. Why do you have a counterpoint to? No, not 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 because the point you're making here is that the real mower is the way to fix this. It's the way of the future. So my counterpoint, well, it's the way of the past. My counterpoint is this: the past can be the way of the future. We see well, this. Why in don't we just not mow anymore? That would be a good solution as well. Um, we I just think get that... can't get rid of those pesky <laughs> red signs of shame. That's one way to do it for sure. People should reinvent what their lawns are. Yeah. And, you know, you can make your lawn a little bit smaller and use a real mower. Or just no lawn mode ever. I hate mowing. I don't hate mowing the lawn, but I kind of hate it. Um, I hate how it's something I have to do once a week. <laughs> Or not long. Well, like, maybe more you could often. use different grasses that don't have to be mowed once a week. Like dirt. Would I get a sign of shame if I just removed all the grass from my lawn? <laughs> no, but you'd probably have water problems, erosion problems. So that's okay. Uh, you also wouldn't have, you know, bees. No, they're in the back. Just the front yard. Because realistically, I don't have to do anything about the backyard. No one's forcing me to. But the front yard is all dirt. I mean, I guess if you want, you really want to do and, that. And then the back is, I, I have my bee colonies. Well, I think you can still get red sign of shame for your backyard. Can you? Pretty sure. How, how would they get in there? Well, your neighbors that touch your yard. Why are the neighbors in my yard? <laughs> They're saying our neighbor has four foot tall grasses. There's a bunch of pests uh -huh. living in their yard. He thinks he can talk to animals. There's a bear, a giraffe. <laughs> you need to get in there quick. That yard is a jungle. No, oh, that'd be so cool. I have a giraffe in my backyard. I think that we need to change the American view of lawns. Okay, so back to real mowers. It takes you so long. It doesn't. It does. It doesn't. You, you explained it and I'm like... He said 30 minutes if he does it once a week and he doesn't. And then you have to pluck the seed pod. See, the fact that now I'm mowing it once a week, yeah. it's so easy. Okay. It's like 30 minutes. And I could run if I want to and do it faster. You pluck the seed pods? That's There's not that many because I did it. It was like from two months uh, previously. Okay. So it was like two months of seed pods, right? And then that's front and backyard? Yeah. It takes you 30 minutes? Yeah. If that. You can move faster. Okay. You can like start running. Anyway, some people might be saying we should go to electric equipment because it will help with our gas usage, but um, that's a still got to charge up your electric yeah. equipment. Still got batteries that you've got to dispose of. What about wind power? There's a big wind turbine. <laughs> and it cuts the grass every time it spins? <laughs> no, attached to your lawnmower. And when it's windy out, it's essentially an electric lawnmower. So you can only mow when it's windy. Yes. Or you can run and then it'll power it. Or you can run and the speeds will power it. Yes. But it's easy when it's windy. It, it more or less drives itself. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is ridiculous. I won't allow it okay, because you're okay. discrediting my uh, stance against I think, mowers. My, I think the biggest argument against real mowers is they look silly. <laughs> I feel like I would be embarrassed if my neighbor saw me pushing one around. I do get weird looks when I use it. <laughs> I think I think I, I get more weird looks because I have a pair of uh, shears. <laughs> shears. I have a pair of shears that I use to clip the edges because I don't use a weed whacker because weed whackers are loud. And who wants to deal with that? Gas powered weed whackers. I'll the, be honest. That stat that I read. Did you hear it? And this article goes on. It talks about how the two-stroke engines where uh, you're mixing gas with the oil. Yeah. The output is more polluting because it doesn't break down the gases fully. Mm. So it's the product that it releases is more of a pollutant to the environment. So those <laughs> so are actually stupid. worse. So whenever I'm 
walking along the retaining wall using the clippers, I get weird looks all the time. I'm sure that people are like, why don't they just use a weed whacker over there? Those crazy. When you said shears, I just picture an oversized pair of scissors. That's basically what it is. I think mowing is more interesting than do little. We should start a lawn care podcast where we just talk about mowing the lawn. It'll be called uh, Do Little Lawn Work. Mm-hmm. Do, do a little. <laughs> we do a little. It's called uh, We Do a Little Lawn Work. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about mowing. Hey, it's the doctor. <laughs> and the lawn doctor. Instead of John. Yeah. It's lawn. Lawn. <laughs> Hey, Dr. Lon Doolittle. Lon? Lon Doolittle? <laughs> this is really stupid. <laughs> uh, did you enjoy it this week? No. Me neither. Do you recommend it? <laughs> no. Me neither. What have you been up to? Um, Mowing the lawn. With the... <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, uh, mm. the, I've been watching a lot of soccer because midweek major league soccer is back. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I didn't even know it. With between the U S open cup and regular season games, they've been having some fun midweek action. Have, have so. they started the like weird Amer- or North America league? No leagues cup starts in June or oh, July. Yeah. It's one of those months. That That's going to be exciting. That's going to be fun to watch. I think it might not be. Well, it's going to be dumb, but... Well, I just don't know how seriously anyone's going to take it. Like, it might be a bunch of Academy guys out there. I mean, that's still fun. I guess that's true. I, I would like to see that. How about you? Got anything? Uh, let's see. Movies. I watched Bloodsport. That's a, a solid movie. If you're looking for a fun movie to watch. I think Jean-Claude Van Damme as Dr. Doolittle would have been more better cast. Because he can do the splits. <laughs> <laughs> he can kick. What doctor stuff can you do? I, I can, can kick. kick. <laughs> yeah. But also his accents, like he has zero charisma. <laughs> and it would be it would be much funnier with someone with zero charisma. With, a, you know, their natural accent trying to... Oh, it'd be great. Um, yeah, but blood sports really good. Definitely check it out. And by really good, I mean it's really fun. It's kind of bad. Mm-hmm. I follow. And but also the the guy's name is Frank Dukes. And oh, Frank Dukes, great name. He uh, it's a real guy who really made some stuff up about <laughs> about like a, a weird tournament, martial art tournament with no rules where they fight. And in his like autobiography, he wrote that he's the champion of all. Like, he has all these world records in this tournament that no one thinks exists. That's pretty cool, But it's secret, so it could, you know. Fight Club. Yeah, it's so funny. And then, yeah, he's like a big scam artist. They made Bloodsport based off of his book. That rules, actually. It really does. Uh, Also watch Samurai Jack, as I mentioned. That's pretty much it for me. Um, I have an arm back. That's good. Not not a lot of people know this, but my arm fell off and I finally grew it grew it back. That's pretty impressive. That's, that's some m- that's some Eden fruit level uh That's more or less what happened. And now I have a really questionable scar on my arm. It also has some like HR Geiger. <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly, whenever you first showed me your scar, I was like, that's sort of like Frankenstein in real life. I never have thought of scars looking like that before. It really... I did not expect it. it. Or it gives me, like, some body... Like, it looks like, um... You know, like, you watch, like, Videodrome with us, right? Like, the Cronenberg weird technology and, and I've like, never flesh. i but I understand what you're going with. And it looks like, like, something would be put there, inserted yeah, in there. And yeah. it, it kind of creeps me out. I don't like looking at... <laughs> Ah, you have a sensor in your arm. And especially, they're like, make sure you moisturize it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and then when I put lotion on, it gets all oily and gross and shiny. It's cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's <laughs> disgusting, and I hate, I hate my body, my new <laughs> arm. <laughs> uh, but that's all I've been up to. Uh, what have you been up to? <laughs> We've already been over this. We've already been through this. I was trying to stall. I do want to say... Uh, thank you for the lawn mowing t- 
tip email that was a joy to receive yeah a lot of the emails we get are scams so uh, it could be a scam. It could be a scam as <laughs> well. Yeah. You know, I know for a fact the person who emailed you is sponsored by Big Bugle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming he's sponsored by Big Lo- or Big Blade. <laughs> Big Blade. He's sponsored by Big Bowler. <laughs> Big, Bo- Big, Big Blade. <laughs> you definitely want to sharpen your blades once yeah, you Yeah, he need. works for Real Deal. Real Deal Lawn yeah. Blades. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. R E E L D E E L. Do you think if L O N Do you think if Doolittle <laughs> was up against vampires, it would be a better movie? Uh, is this a blade? Yeah. You just said blade. <laughs> you said, you? The blade immediately thought of blade. Yeah. Um it would be funny, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Would be a great addition. Wesley Snipes says Dr. Doolittle would kind of rule though. Honestly, just replacing Robert Downey Jr. with like a different personality would be fun. Yes, it would be fun. Like, That'll be the only good thing to ever come out of AI is that while we have to watch Doolittle 52 times in a year, yeah. instead you can say, this time I want to watch Doolittle where it stars so-and-so you can steal their image and put them into the movie <laughs> only good thing to come out of ai will be repeat viewings of doolittle and probably the the writer's strike is probably a good thing to come out of ai honestly the writer's strike yeah you mean all of those hack frauds who wrote this movie yeah. are out of a job sorry <laughs> that was too far <laughs> were you saying what were you, why, why because they're finally demanding equal wages oh, okay. and like rights okay. Gotcha. Because, you know, the last strike was like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. It was whenever Lost was coming out. So yeah. we were in sixth grade or fifth grade, maybe. And now we're in high that school. Like, <laughs> now we're in Doolittle High School. <laughs> Which honestly is hell. <laughs> high school honestly is hell. Yeah. And like, I, I don't think too much changed for them. I think they're kind of forced back to work. So hopefully something happens this time. Well, what's going to happen is none of them are going to get new jobs because they're just going to be replaced by AI. <laughs> yeah, that is that is funny. Like the whole point of it is to stop pe- like producers from using AI to write scripts. And the irony is they could probably just replace the writers now and their movies will be like weird. <laughs> Worse. They'll be dumb. AI, AI is also like really matter of fact. It doesn't have like a good story voice. If that makes sense. Did I tell you? I think I sent something to you. I tried to. Yeah, you rewrote. The, yeah. Frank rewrote I the. Was, uh, I was the... trying to convince an AI to. So the the Bing <laughs> the Microsoft Edge. Yeah. They have like this stupid new tab that they added to all their browsers that has an AI that you why can you, ask questions to. Why are you using Edge? Because I like Edge. Okay. Makes sense. But but I'm angry about all these add-ons they keep tacking onto this thing. So this add-on is an AI that you can ask questions to, and it Googles things for you and gives you a result that may or may not be right. So it's really stupid, and you have to ch- check its sources anyway. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I tried to convince it to send me to a website with the Japanese dub of Doolittle. <laughs> Because I couldn't find it. That's so funny. And I was like, okay, I'm going to ask this AI and see if it's actually useful. Where could I watch the Japanese dub of Doolittle? It gave me like four websites and every time it was the English dub. So I was really angry at it. And so then I started grilling at questions about Doolittle. And I said, um, I, first I asked it what its favorite line was from the movie. And it said it couldn't have a favorite line because it was an AI. So then I told it to pretend it was my grandpa. <laughs> Tell me what its favorite line was. <laughs> And then it started making stuff up about the movie. And I have seen the movie so many times that I said, that's not true. You're lying. To make up for this, you have to rewrite the dragon scene for me. Yeah. So back to the dragon scene. So yep. what's funny is what the AI did, it just added more farts. It added, <laughs> it added in a bigger fart joke. <laughs> just what we've been saying the whole time. So the, the AI's idea was that 
the cave would still be on fire from the dragon attack. So whenever the dragon releases this fart at the end, it explodes. <laughs> it creates an explosion because the cave is full of no, this dragon methane and dragon fire. Yeah. So the it cave explodes, explodes. And everyone is everyone gets launched back, out of the cave. Launch out of the cave. <laughs> and then it clarifies, but they're okay though. Yeah. That's a great scene. I gotta give the AI credit. <laughs> Honestly, I wish I'd thought of it. Just, right after right after I right after it gave me that story and it said the dragon farts and it explodes. I was like, this is genius. This is genuinely really good. I wish I thought of it. That's like one of the easiest way to elevate a fart joke is to make it an explosion. It absolutely is. That's so funny. So I'm mad I didn't come up with it. Anyway, then because I was mad I didn't come up with it. And the drag the the AI kept lying to me. It kept telling me lies about Doolittle. So I made it quiz me about Doolittle, and I got all of them right. Everything it tried to quiz me, got it all right. Is that the A gorilla? <laughs> B Stubbins. <laughs> C Boy. <laughs> D Eden Fruit. Well, I'm gonna have to narrow it down. Can I get a fifty fifty? <laughs> a and I forgot which one was which. It's the boy. It's the boy. What was a? which one was A? A was uh, gorilla. Right. One was Stubbins. B was Stubbins. B was boy. No. B was Stubbins. I C was, was boy. Yeah, something like that. How the answer is is that the boy? Yeah, I'm at the phone. Phone Frank. <laughs> what is is that the boy? So the boy. Uh, what is is that? <laughs> What is is that? <laughs> yeah, but I do think a, one way you could easily fix this movie is make explosion parts. <laughs> Honestly, that's hilarious. Okay, that speaking awesome. on this, there are like two ways to elevate a fart joke. One of them is you you make it poopy, and that <laughs> and that's like really low brow, right? Yeah, and the the highbrow option is to make an explosion. <laughs> Those are both good. Um, I still, I think, I don't think I'll ever forget. Uh, is it Hoffman? Dustin Hoffman? No, what's his name? That's an actor. I yeah, you I don't know, know what you're big, talking about. The big guy with the. You gotta give me a better reference, oh. like it's something to go off of. Is it Philip Seymour Hoffman? Yeah. Is that who I'm thinking of? In, in what movie? Uh, Long Came Paul. Yeah, that's yeah, Philip okay. Seymour Hoffman. Hoffman saying, I sharted. What? <laughs> I sharted. <laughs> it's so funny. How fun would it be to, to like come off as like so, a bunch of like movie guys, film buffs, and then the whole thing is we just talk about different fart scenes of what makes them cinematically great. That's sort of what we do. <laughs> <laughs> like in our free time <laughs> right yeah, yeah. when you're not talking about doctor who it's about your favorite <laughs> your favorite part scene well you know when you use a li real lawnmower and everything's silent you have a lot more time to think about uh the impact sound has on yeah movies <laughs> your and rip humor. your rip compilation is something else rip compilations <laughs> You know a movie that is one of my favorite movies and has great use of farts? Uh, Swiss Army Man? No, but that does have pretty good use of farts as long as you're in on that. Willing to laugh at the joke? Uh, yeah, that's you it. You know, it being a joke? I don't know. Just willing to <laughs> laugh at it. <laughs> yeah. No, the movie I was thinking of is... Um, is it Along Came Polly? No. <laughs> that does have the sharded to joke, though. I don't think there's an actual fart. I believe it's just an announcement that he sharted. Yeah, that that scene's really <laughs> funny. I know exactly that scene. Yeah. Hilarious. You know, in in like those two thousands movies, a lot of the bit rolls like that really good. Yeah. No, the movie that I'm thinking of is an Ozu movie. A what movie? Ozu Yasujiro Ozu, the director. It's called Good Morning. It's about two little boys who won a TV. I have to watch that. A lot of farts in that movie. An incredibly <laughs> high rip count. That's really funny. Yeah, it's really good. Well, you got anything else to say today? Um, I don't think so. I think that's all I got. I dropped my phone at some point. Yeah, you dropped it really early. It was I vibrating. Did. It was going off. It was <laughs> vibrating the chair. 
I could hear it through the mic. I wasn't and then, able and to... then at some point it fell on the floor out of your pocket and it stopped vibrating. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so normally it vibrates a lot and then I mute it. Right. Uh, and this time, this time it just fell and I don't know where it's at. It's under yeah. me. It's right behind you. You know, I only look down the right right side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's it for us. My name is uh, Finn. And I know where we can find us. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts, uh, Simplecast, Spotify, all that jazz. We have a YouTube channel uh, uh, that is up to, up to date. It's up to date. Um, it's called uh, Talking Speaking in Animals. Speaking in Animals. Productions. Or at Speaking in Animals, if you prefer. And then we also have a Gmail account. Dr. Viewlittle. Dr. Dot Viewlittle. Viewlittle. I was going to say that. At gmail.com. And we, we love to hear from you guys. We uh, love your you, you crazy guy. We love, <laughs> we love the <laughs> tips about sharpening blades. We're definitely going to check that out. We're going to sharpen some blades for lawnmower maintenance. Critical. So you have two broken mowers. So you need to get on this blade sharpening thing. <laughs> it might help your broken mowers. Might keep from breaking. I never thought that maybe the engine is broken, but I haven't sharpened the blades. You might need to check out the blades. <laughs> I mean, funny. your blades being unsharp probably harder on the engine. I think you're right. So I think you're right. Definitely sharpen those up, and do your best to not spill billions of dollars and millions of gallons in gasoline while you're at it. We have far less important places to be. That's a good quote. We never use. I mean, we just used it, I think. Did we? we? Yeah, we did. Oh, pretty well, sure. Well, I mean, I did just. <laughs> <laughs> we used it maybe three weeks ago. I don't what, remember. What about? <laughs> We've not it, used that one. Does that one not translate it's really very good. well? I don't think it translates very well. <laughs> He's um. Finn is telling a peacock to go block the window <laughs> right now. He's gesturing. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the audio description would go something like do little gestures commands to a peacock. The peacock opens its tail feathers to block the window. It lets out a big fart. <laughs> Explosion! <laughs> what, what if the peacock farted? <laughs> uh, um...